respected ulama ikram elders brothers mothers and sisters listening as molana has mentioned a very important topic who am i each and every one of us we need to ask this question you might be thinking to yourself that i'm a muslim i'm a british citizen there's more deep understanding needs to be taken place here what is the definition of a muslim like the scholars and those who have studied in madrasa we have read that the definition definition of a muslim is iqrarun bil lisan wa tasdiqun bil qalb wa amalun bil arkan that you testify with your tongue you also you actually say verbalize it with your tongue you testify with your heart and amalun bil arkan practically with your limbs body So this all this combination of all three a person becomes a muslim and we need to keep that in mind that islam is a all embracing religion all comprehensive is a wholesome package you can't just have one thing and leave the other we have to be a full time muslim like we have example a person gets married the marriage ceremony takes place in this madrasa so we ask the bridegroom that do you accept this marriage with this certain sister and he says qabil to her wa nakah to her i accept and i accept her in my wedlock so basically what does that mean that all the things that come with this package the rights and responsibilities the duties and all the other obligations that's also included in this So after the marriage the wife becomes ill she wants to go to the doctors she wants to go hospital my husband please take me I didn't say that in my wedding day I just said I accepted you I didn't say I'm going to take you to the doctors so that comes within the package so it's a wholesome package so like nikah is a wholesome package it includes all the responsibilities once you have said qabil to her everything comes with it in the same way when you have said la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah there is no deity except allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is allah's messenger when you have said the first part of iman of islam of the shahada that you accept and you believe and you will oblige and comply by everything all the commandments all the obligations all the injunctions set by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you have said muhammad rasulullah you have accepted muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as your role model and you're going to follow every sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you're not going to have a minute amount of doubt shred of doubt regarding allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's what it entails so we have said the kalima like the hadith been mentioned by molana myself i said it in the khutbah qul amantu billahi thumma astaqim so when that person asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the backdrop to this the shani wurud that a person came and he asked ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell me something which i can do that after this i don't need to ask anybody else so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the all embracing religion and the words all comprehensive and concise he just said these words qul say amantu billah i believe in allah thumma astaqim then stay steadfast till your last moment wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen worship your lord until yaqeen comes that's how we need to take things forward so the quranic verse is telling us innal ladina qalu rabbuna allah indeed those people who believe in allah rabb they say rabbuna allah our lord is allah and not only that thumma stab then thumma staqamu they stay steadfast they remain consistent punctual constant on the deen that's the most important thing we have said the kalima we need to go forward so iqrarun bil lisan wa tasdiqun bil qalb we have said the words we have the tasdiq bil qalb but amalun bil arkan is many a place is zero so if a person that that's why there's so many different categories allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the different categories of people there are some people who have iqrarun bil lisan but they don't have tasdiq bil qalb who are these people the munafiqun idha ja'aka al munafiqun qalu nashhadu innaka la rasulullah wallahu ya'lamu innaka la rasul wallahu yashhadu inna al munafiqin la kadhibun the munafiqun they used to come to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to say nashhadu innaka we give testimony that you the messenger of allah 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wallahu yashhadu inna al-munafiqeen la kathibun. Allah is giving test to the munafiqeen are liars. Wa min al-nasi may yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil yawmi al-akhiri wa ma hum bi mu'minin. There are those people who say, I believe in Allah on the last day, but they're not believers. Yukhadi'oon Allah wa al-ladhina amanu wa ma yakhda'oon illa anfusahum wa ma yash'oon. They think that they're deceiving Allah and the believers, they're only deceiving themselves. So these are the munafiqoon, they're not in the fold of Islam. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ The munafiqoon, the hypocrites, will be the lowest part of Jahannam. So these, these people, so we have to have a combination of all three. So these people have iqrar bil lisan, not tasdiq bil qalb. Then we have those people who have tasdiq bil qalb, not iqrar bil lisan. Like the people of the Ahl Kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا They reject their faith even though they have yaqeen in the hearts. أَلَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءُهُمْ These people who have been given the books, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, يَعْرِفُونَهُ They recognize you, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like the way they recognize their own sons. But why don't they accept? ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا Because of their position, they think to themselves, if we accept Islam, then we'll lose our leadership, we'll lose our fame, we'll lose our status. Because of this reason. They don't accept. Sayyidina Umar Faru radiallahu ta'ala says that Allah gives the example of Abna, that they recognized their sons. So, the, it's even more than that, because many a times you could be wrong about your sons, because if the wife was committed infidelity, she was unfaithful, that child is not yours, that's a possibility. But regarding the Prophet it's not even that shred of doubt. Just amazing. So these, these people who have to, who don't, who have to stick with the qalb, not iqrarun bilisan. So they are not Muslims as well. So we have two categories, I've just told you. The munafiqun, they have iqrarun bilisan, not the stick with the qalb. They declare by mouth, but by heart, no. And the others, the Ahli Kitab, they have it in the heart, but they don't pronounce it. They don't verbalize it. They don't articulate it. Then we have those people, subhanallah, they have iqrarun bil lisan, tasdiq bil qalb. But they, amalun bil arkan, zero. So we as believers, we say, alhamdulillah, we are believers. But in terms of our actions, no salah, no fasting. So what do you categorize? They might be a believer just by name, but they will be in the fit terminology will be classed as fasid. Amalun bil arka, zero. So we have to make sure we have a combination of all three in our lives. So, four different categories. We have those who are the hypocrites, those who just declare by the tongue, they don't have any action, they don't show their terms of in the heart, they don't believe it. So they are munafiq, etiqadi, in their beliefs. Then we have the Ahl Kitab, those people who have it in their heart, they have that yateen, but out of jealousy, hatred for the Prophet ﷺ, for Islam, they will not accept. Then we have within our Muslims, those people who iqrar bil lisa tasdiq bil qalb, they will testify with their tongue, they will testify in the hearts as well, but amalun bil arkan, practical side is zero. There's no demonstration of Islam. So they will be classed as fajir, fasid, transgressors. And fourth group is those people, Alhamdulillah, those of iqrar bil lisan, tasdiq bil qalb, and amalun bil arkan, practical side as well. So these are those people who are the true Muslims. So we need to ask ourselves, who am I? Which category am I coming in? So, especially a Farsi and a Mu'min, we have to keep that in mind, that our practical side has to be there. And today, that's what he's saying, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ You know, we made this promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the alam arwah, in the world of souls. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ زُهُورِهِمْ ذُرْوِيَّتَهُمْ أَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ That he took out all the souls on the plains of Arafat and he asked, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? Each and every one of us, we said, Bala. Each and every one. And then Allah sent us in this world to our next journey, next leg of our journey, which is Alam al-Dunya. So basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to this in this verse which has been recited, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ 
That those people said, Rabbun Allah in the alam arwah, in the world of souls. And when they came into this world, thumma staqamu, they stayed steadfast. Now we need to ask ourselves, how many of our brothers and sisters have stayed, stayed steadfast on this? Because every one of us, from the time of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, till the last person on the surface of earth who will come before the judgment day, every one of the soul was there, present. And every single one, without any exception, everybody said Bala. So now when we came into this world, Thumma Staqam, people have forgotten. So they're not Istiqamat, there's no Istiqamat there. So within the Istiqamat, so basically nearly 80% of the people removed from that category. Then within that 20%, how many of us in terms of Istiqamat Etamma, complete Istiqamat, how many? We can ask this question that how many of us performed our Fajr Salah today? Because we made a promise Allah will be listening to you. Allah said, Aqimis salata li duluki shamsa ila rasakil layl wa Qur'an al-Fajr. Inna Qur'an al-Fajr ikana mashuda. How many of us we follow the injunction? Because I said it's a wholesome package. It's not sufficient enough. Allah says, Ahasib al-Nasu ay yutraku ay yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Do you people think that you just said Amanna and you will not be tested? وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah tested the previous people and He distinguished those people who are the true people and who are the liars. So we as Muslims, Alhamdulillah, we have Iman, but we need to go one step further and demonstrate and practice that. We can't just be sitting down, idle, lazy, complacent. Who is the intelligent person? We need to ask ourselves, am I from those intelligent people? Because nowadays we think this person has got a BA degree, master's, he's got a PhD, he's got a good permanent uh, professional job. And we think that person is successful. He's got a you know, permanent job, he's got a good house, he's got you know, children, uh, Everything's okay, materialistically everything's okay, spiritually nothing's okay. So this is the problem. That's why one of the signs of Tiyamah, nas ala zaman. A time will come upon the people, la yabqa min al Islam illa ismuhu. That nothing of Islam will remain but his name. So who am I? My name is Abdullah. Who am I? My name is Abdul Rahman. Who am I? Sister Aisha, Sister Khadija. So we will say the names, but after that, what is it? The challenges are so much. If we are slipping now, we are failing now. You know, I was just thinking yesterday, what is going to happen when Imam Mahdi and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam come? And on the other side, you have Dajjal, the Antichrist. And he's going to come and he's going to put Jannat in front of our eyes. Those who believe in me, they will go into Jannah. Then those, he will show Jahannam. See, if you don't believe, you're going to go into Jahannam. You're going to go into the fire of hell. So just imagine the test. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the biggest fitna, the biggest trial to come upon this ummah is the fitna of Dajjal. Are we ready to save ourselves from this fitna? We have so many fitna within ourselves. That's why Surah Al-Kaf is of vital importance. It's crucial. It's key that we recite this Surah Al-Kahf on every Fridays to safeguard ourselves. And the scholars have said, because this is the biggest fitna, if anybody reads Surah Al-Kahf, then all the other fitna, they are minor compared to the Jal fitna. So a person will be safeguarded from them as well. That's why we need to read. A lot of people say, oh, I'm not going to see the Jal. I'm going to die before that. But there's so many fitna now. Satakuna fitna, samma bakma amiya. Fitna will come and make a person deaf, dumb and blind. The fitna will be such, a person will not, deaf, dumb and blind means deaf in terms of understanding the, listening to the truth. Dumb in terms of speaking the truth. And blind in terms of seeing the truth. A person will not be seeing everything. Deaf, dumb and blind, he will not return. And my brothers and sisters, this thing doesn't happen overnight. It happens gradually. That's why in the hadith he says, إِذَا أَذْنَبَ لَعَبْدُ ذَنْبًا فَكَانَتْ نُقْتَةٌ سَوْدَاءُ فِي قَلْبِهِ When a person commits a sin, a black spot falls on his heart. It's black blemish. Spot. This mark. 
Then for in zada zada, if he continues to commit the sin, this blood spot spreads out, cancerous. A person always thinks to himself, "Acha, I've been diagnosed with cancer. Acha, as he spread it out, and if he hasn't, then he's got more chances of living." But the same, exactly the same parallel, same uh, parable, same example, same uh, similitude can be given here as well. That if it spreads out, it becomes more dangerous. For in zada zada, wa in taba. If he does toba, if he uses the medicine and he gets rid of it, so his heart will become polished. And if he continues, the Quran says, Then his heart becomes rusted. And then what happens is, His heart is sealed, his eyes, his ears, everything. He will have it. Severe punishment. He becomes deaf, doom and blind. Not physic, not spiritually, but phys- and not physically he's deaf, doom and blind, but spiritually he's deaf, doom and blind. He's not blind from the eyes, he's blind from the heart. He's got the eyesight, but not the inside. He's got the basarat, but not the basirat. This is what's going to happen. That's why Shah Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, how beautifully he says, that's why we should never ever belittle any good deeds. So many times, oh, what is it? It's mustahab. Praiseworthy, desirable. You don't need to do it. You come into the masjid, subhanAllah, you got a bit of time, two minutes. You come inside the masjid, read two rakats of the Hayyid al Masjid. Don't think this is a small, it's great reward. It is more better. Khairun na dunya wa fiha. Better than the dunya when it contains. We don't realize. So a person should never ever underestimate. Do you know, it reminds me of this Mufti Mahmud Hassan Sab Rahmatullahi Alayhi. So, he say, so regarding him, he says that once he was performing the salah behind the Imam, his friend came late. And we know the masala. Just listen to this uh, attentively so we'll understand what I'm trying to say. So we know that if a person gets the Imam before the ruku, before he stands from the ruku, you get that full rakat. That's the fifth masla. And if you don't get that ruku, you join the imam in the first sajida or second sajida, you have to repeat that rakat. So many of us, what we do is, if we have missed the ruku, we try running. We shouldn't be running. That's another masla. When you see the imam in ruku, it's like subhanallah, the thunderstorm. <laughs> Everybody's trying to run. That's wrong. The, the Quran, the hadith says it very clearly. You understand? Know, don't run. You know, he says, Imshu, just walk it there. So basically, what happens is, if you don't get the ruku, then you haven't got that rakat. So if you got the sajda, a lot of people that, if they have come late, they just remain standing until the imam stands up for the second rakat. We shouldn't. Whatever the situation, Allahu Akbar, pause for a moment of time, then go into that posture, whichever the imam is. Whether he's in coma, whether he's in the first sajda, whether he's in the jalsa, or in the second sajda. So his friend who came, they were in the second sajda, he waited for the imam to stand up, then he continued his salah from there. After the salam, Mufti Mahmoud Sahib looked at him and he goes, my friend, that sajda, that's not counted in terms of the mas'ala in the rakat, which is extra, but that one sajda is khairun min dunya wa mafiha. It is better than the dunya when it contains. Even though in the Muslim wise that wasn't counted, but if you did that sarida, it was more great and more valuable than the dunya what it contains. Allah Akbar. We don't value anything. We think, oh, Shah, that's it. Do you know that subhanallah, tamla ul mizan. That one subhanallah will fill the scales. I mentioned that a person when he's going to enter Jannah, he's going to smell this beautiful aroma, fragrance coming from the Jannah above. So he's going to be saying, oh, Allah, what good deed has he done that he's got a Jannah much more greater than mine, above mine? So, the reply will be given to him, O oh my servant, your deeds and his deeds, in terms of salah, fasting, zakat, everything that you have done, exactly he's done the same. So what has he done extra? He just read one subhanallah more than you. One subhanallah more. That's why subhanallah tamla ul mizan, subhanallah fills the scales. We don't realize the value of this one subhanallah, but we'll realize when we close our eyes. So my brothers, the point I was saying, Shah Abdul Aziz Rahmatullah, he said, Man tahawana bin nawafil, tahawana bin sunan. 
A person who is lazy in carrying out the nawafil, the optional things, tahawan of sunan, that will have a gradual effect on him and he will start to become lazy in carrying out the sunnahs. A time, we, because we start to miss the sunnah, the ghayr mu'akkada, asr sunnah, isha sunnah, then slowly, slowly, Allah forbid, we start missing the mu'akkada. The four rakas of sunnah before Zohar, the two rakas after Zohar, the two rakas after Isha, the two rakas before Fajr. So the twelve sunnah, the mu'akkada, we start to have laziness in them. We gradually stop performing them. Then when we stop performing them, وَمَنْ تَحَوَنَا بِالسُنَنْ تَحَوَنَا بِالْفَرَائِذِ when a person is lazy in carrying out the sunnahs, then that will gradually, eventually have effect on his fara'is. And we see that a person who starts missing that, then to miss his fajr, to miss his zohar, is no problem. That's what we become, those people who just perform Juma. Juma, every masjid is full. We have two Juma, three Juma. Eid, five, six Juma. Starts at six o'clock in the morning, continues for five, six Juma. Subhanallah. That is wajib. We're missing fara'is every day. So tahawana bil is a person becomes lazy in carrying out the fara'is. So when that happens is Allahu Akbar. وَمَنْ تَحَوَنَ بِالْفَرَائِزِ سُلِبَ الْمَعْرِفَةِ When a person is lazy in carrying out the fara'is, then the recognition of Allah, the Iman, goes away. That's why he says in the hadith, authentic hadith, that a person who misses three Jum'ah continuously, then that heart Allah seals, no goodness goes into that heart. So we need to tell our youngsters, go to secondary school, college, university, or working in offices and companies, where they don't get the opportunity of doing their Juma. this is dangerous. Either we have facilities there, or either we need to leave the job. If they don't give us the facility, then for us to continue working in that place, for a brother who's bowling, he needs to make sure he comes out from that job. It's not permissible for us to continue that job. Because Juma, you cannot read it individually. So you have to have the facilities there and you need to read your Juma. This is something we don't put significance in. So the fitna is coming to us in every angle. This fitna, Allahu Akbar. Imam Shah Waliullah Muhaddith Dehli wa Rahmatullah Ali Rais in Hujjatullah al Baligha. In the Kitab al Fitan, he says, anna fitna ala aqsam. He says, Know that there are different types of fitna. Minha fitna tul wajul fi nafsihi, bi ay yaksuwa kalbu, fala yajidu laddata ta'ati wala laddata al munajat. We are the living statistics. He said, There's the first fitna is within ourselves. We are within ourselves, there's this fitna, the trial, the tribulation. What is that? That a person fi nafsihi bi ay yaksuwa kalbu, that his heart becomes very hardened. We don't want to come to the masjid. We can't open the Quran and recite the Quran. On Fridays we'll get messages reminded to recite Surah Kaf. We don't read it ourselves. So heart has become so hardened. Bi ay yaksuwa kalbu. That's why one Sahabi came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, you mentioned these incidents, you made everybody cry, but I couldn't cry. What's the reason? So he said beautiful words. The lack of tears, why we can't cry? We see all these things on our Facebook, on our social media. We see many brothers and sisters dying in Afghanistan. The earthquake has happened. What happened in Rohingya camp, uh, the Burma? What's happened in Palestine? Allahu Akbar. Leave alone tears coming out. We don't even change our own lifestyle. We don't even raise our hands to pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters. Leave alone assisting them. So this is the problem that we have. Jumud al there is no tears coming out. So we need to be under, thinking to ourselves, you know, we need to cry upon the reason that we cannot cry. Leave alone crying upon them. We should be crying upon the reason that we cannot cry. What is happening? The Prophet ﷺ, Allahu Akbar, when he used to perform his tahajjud, in the hadith of any books he mentioned in Shamal, everything, wafiz jawfihi azizun ka azizil mirjal. From his chest, this noise is to come as though, like, you know, when a person is cooking rice and at the end is making that noise, <laughs> like that, he's crying so much. So he says in the hadith of Bukhari that when Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he mentioned the hadith where he was fatally stabbed by this, uh, 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 this person who came and attacked him at the time of Fajr Salah. So Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi, the Mul'oon, who came and attacked him and he became shaheed after that. So he says that we used to listen. You know, sometime when he used to perform salah, Sami'na nasija Umar. 
Nasij, the word in Arabic Nasij means any siskiya in Urdu. A person when he cries so much that at the end when the, the noise comes, the sound comes, that's called Nasij in Arabic. So he's to cry so much in Salah. So this was the situation there, subhanallah, the sentiments of our pious predecessors. So the point here is Jumud al Ain. That lack of tears. Why is there is lack of tears? Min Faswatil Qalb. Because of the hard heartedness. Our hearts have become so hard, the Quran speaks out. That then your hearts became so hard, it became stones. No, nay, worse than stones. Then Allah gives three different categories of stones. That's one stone, subhanallah, the rivers gush forth from the stones. The other ones, the water trickles from it. And the third stones, that it falls due to the fear of Allah. We're not on any level. We're worse than the boulder, worse than that rock, worse than that stone. The jumud al ayn min qaswat al qalb. Because of hard heartedness. And why is the hard heartedness? وَقَسْوَةُ الْقَلْبِ مِنْ كَثْرَةِ الزُّنُوبِ The hard heartedness is due to excessive sinning. We sin so much, as I mentioned the hadith, that it's become so black. You know, when something white becomes black, you're not going to bother. It's already, you know, people think that this is black color, you don't bother. It's okay, leave it. So a person doesn't want to change it. A person has become so accustomed to it. There's no difference. Leave it. Why excessive sinning? Why are we sinning for? وَنِسِيَانُ مِنْ amal. So, كَثْرَةِ zunub مِنْ نِسِيَانُ Because we've forgotten death. A person is excessively sinning. He's sinning day and night. Why? Because he's forgotten death. نِسِيَانُ الْمَوْتِ We don't, we don't realize that one day we have to leave this world. كُلُّ نَسِّنْ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْ نُجُورَهُمْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ that every nafs, in everything in this world, you can have two different opinions. Are you going to die? Yes, there's not second opinion. Everybody has to die. Kullu nafsin We have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because we don't have that, we think to ourselves, I say, no, no, I'm going to live so long. Do you know the way we are preparing ourselves in this world? It's like, you know, we're going to live here for so many years. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the disbelievers, you are happy, you're saying that oh, the Prophet Muhammad is going to die and this religion is going to die away, die out. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he dies and you think you're going to live forever, you're not going to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahu Akbar. So when nisiyanul maut min tul, why have we forgotten death? Min tul amal. Because of the high expectation in life. You have so much high expectation. The Prophet drew a rectangle, rectangle box. He said, this is your life. He drew one line in between. He said, your life finishes at the edge of that box. Then he drew another line outside. And he said, this is the person's anticipation and hope and design wishes. That's more. It's not going to end. That's why in the hadith he says, يَحْرُمُ بُنُ آدَمُ يَشِبُّ مِنْهُ إِثْنَانِ Son of Adam, he becomes old. وَيَشِبُّ مِنْهُ إِثْنَانِ Two things remain young. Al-hirsu ala al-mal, al-hirsu ala al-umr. His lalach, his greed, his craving for wealth. And his craving to live longer. Even if he's 90, 100, he's still, uh, you know, 19 years, I just hope that I get my century. Nobody wants to die early. So al-hirsu ala al-umr. So our expectation is so much. He reminds me of the answer of Sheikh Chilli. You know, this young boy. He, like we have lazy people, lazy youngsters, they don't want to do anything in life. So the mother said, look, your father passed away, he's late. You know, I've been working now, I've become old now. Please go and search for some work and you know, sort the family out. He's never worked. Like many of our youngsters never worked. Like you see youngsters, uh, Ustadji, Mufti Sahib, you know, I got a job working for next. So, okay, mashallah, very good. Keep it up. Make sure you're punctual. Next week comes, Mufti Sahib, the works, uh, you know, they've uh, fired me. So why? They sacked me. Why? Oh, you know, I'm supposed to attend at 9 o'clock. I, you know, I used to attend at 11 o'clock. Said, well, of course they can do that. <laughs> All night you're on the social media and they said you can't, you know, you sleep late and you're waking up late. They're not going to keep you. So we youngsters are so lazy. They're not going to work. So this youngster, he went, 
he went into the marketplace and he was looking for and he was asking around any work for me any work for me so everybody is just confused what is it doing so one person looked at him and he had a barrel of oil and he said okay you are looking for some work okay you take this barrel of oil to my house and then i will give you one rupee son so he was okay so he's never carried a barrel of oil he put it on his head and he was carrying it and once he was carrying it on his head he was thinking he's going to give me one rupee with that one rupee i'm going to buy some eggs and with that egg is going to hatch is going to give chicks and they're going to grow and they're going to be chickens and i'm going to sell them i'm going to get some goats and sheep and from there i'm going to get some cows and then i'm going to have a farm then i'm going to get married i'm going to have children what once he's going he's thinking all that from one rupee he hasn't even got that one rupee yet and he's thinking that all that time so so he's so much deep in that thought he's thinking i'm going to get married i'm going to have children my children are going to grow and they're going to you know say to me abbu give me some money i'm say hush so when he was saying hush was so determined in that and so focused on that the barrel of oil fell from his head so the person the owner he became so angry because you destroyed my oil i just got that for 10 rupees and you destroyed it because you're thinking about your barrel of oil i've lost all my family everybody all my assets this is the way we thinking that's the way we are thinking in our life this is what this is what's going to happen we're going to live our life in this way we have so much dreams we're living in a fantasy world and a person is thinking that you know like people when they get married you know mr and mrs perfect so the son came to their mother and said you know when can i find the right partner in my life the son came and asked the mother mother can you tell me when can i find the right partner in my life for marriage i'm trying to get married but i can't because better don't stop looking for the right partner you become the right person you become the right person this is the thing that we need to get into our life we have to become the right person so what am i saying nisyan why have you forgotten that because of a high expectation so many expectation the urdu poet says umar daraz maang kar laaye the char din do arzu mein kat gaye do intezar mein i wanted a long life so i had i got four days so that four days how did i spend it do arzu mein kat ke i'll do this mai ye kar dunga wo kar lunga aur do intezar mein acha kal 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 bas khatam zindagi life finished this is what we doing in life we no realize it is so short so zindagi ka almiya ye nahi hai ke you know hamari zindagi you know the, the point says that you know we have learned yani almiya ye hai ke humne zindagi guzarna bahut taakhir se sikhi hai we learned to live life very late this was happened so what we need to do is we need to start now and we need to get a start that's why i always say between the regret of yesterday and the hope of tomorrow lies the opportunity of today we need to make that change now so what i'm saying is that with tool al amal that we got high expectation we shouldn't be having high expectation in life when we know that tomorrow we you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the day of judgment he says in so many places innahum yarawnahu ba'ida wa narahu qariba you think is far away wa narahu qariba we know is very close Allah says ya ayyul ladina amanu taqullaha wa la tanzuru ma qaddamat li ghad O believers fear Allah and see what you are put for tomorrow tomorrow ghad referring to tomorrow day of judgment in some place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says al yawma tujzaw today live on tomorrow Allah says today is the day of judgment and the worst thing is today don't delay it do whatever you need to do don't leave anything for tomorrow because it's today the day of judgment today you will be compensated so each and every one of us we need to keep that in mind then the prophet allah finishes this wa tul amal min hubbid dunya why high, high expectation because we got the love for the dunya you know the love for the dunya wa hubbid dunya ra'su kulli khati'a the love for the dunya is the root of all evils this is the root of all evils that's why the love of the dunya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al qiyamah he says kalla bal tuhibbun al ajila wa tadharun al akhirah ne you love the dunya and you leave the akhirah you know the scholars of tafsir jazaahumullahu anna khair al jaza they say allah didn't say you love the dunya you don't love the akhirah allah says you leave the akhirah you leave the akhirah why because 
having the love for the dunya will automatically make you leave the akhirah. You cannot have both together. You cannot have the love for the dunya and love for the akhirah in the same heart. It's impossible. How beautifully Sayyidina Ali Radiyam gives an example. He said, Ad dunya wal akhiratu darratan. Dunya and akhirat are like two co-wives. A person has two wives. فَإِنْ رَضِيَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا سَخِيْتَةِ الْأُخْرَى If you make one happy, the other one will be naraz. فَآثِرُ مَا يَبْقَى عَلَى مَا يَفْنَى So give the tarji, give the priority to the one who will remain. If you the akhirah, open the one which will finish. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى You're giving the priority to the dunya and in reality, akhirat is better for you. مَا عِنْدَكُمْ يَنْفَدْ وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ بَا Whatever you got will finish. Whatever Allah has, that will remain. So what we need to do, my brothers and sisters, who am I? I need to identify myself that what type of Muslim am I? Am I a complete Muslim? Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisani wa yadi. That who is a true believer? Al-Muslim, al-Iflam, lil-Kamil. That al-Iflam is a true believer. The, the qualities of a believer, we need to imbibe them, we need to inculcate them, we need to implement them, we need to practice them, we need to put them into our lives. That's the only way we can move forward. And as been mentioned, the challenge is as such, that if we are not strict and strong on our iman, if we don't have the iman like the Sahaba Ikram and Subhanallah, then anything that can come forward, they will be able to challenge it. But how strong are we? When a, just a breeze comes, we fall down. They had wind, thunderstorm coming towards them. Mashallah, they were strong. Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala, subhanallah. We know the famous incident. You know, boulders on his chest in the scorching heat. He's sweltering, he's persevering in that situation. But they're saying, leave the deen of Islam. And he's saying, ahad, 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 ahad. Allahu Akbar. This is the thing. He reminds me, subhanallah. You know how simple these people were? You know, Hayat al-Sahaba, he mentions that he went to you know, uh, give proposal to his future father-in-law. You know how simple these people were. So he goes with his brother, knocks on the door, the person opens the door. And nowadays, you know, in terms of marriage, we will be, you know, having this flowery kind of, you know, CV and this and that, all the degrees, even if you haven't got them, you'll still put them and all the rest. And sisters will put themselves, you know, height, one, two inches higher with the high heel shoes and, you know, sandal you know, beautify the face with foundation cream and say, you know, I'm, you know, it's light skin, not dark skin and all the rest of it. So all these things happen. But how did Sayyidina Bilal Allah Ta'ala put his CV forward? Listen to this, my brothers. Those who understand Arabic, you love it. So simple. You, they opened the door and he said, Ana Bilal wa hadha akhi. I am Bilal. He could have said, I'm the Mu'adhin. Do you know, for your record, I will be in front of the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah as well. Do you know I'll be giving Azan in Jannah? Do you know I've been given glad tidings of paradise? Do you know I was the first person to stand on the Kaaba and do the Azan? Nothing like that. Ana Bilalun wa hadha I am Bilal and this is my brother. And he, then he says, Abdani min al Habasha. Two slaves from Abyssinia, from the African country, Egypt, uh, from Ethiopia. We were misguided, Allah guided us. We were slaves, Allah liberated us. If you get, you know, if you accept the proposal, Alhamdulillah. If you don't, Allah is great, Allah will sort some other thing out for us. Allahu Akbar. So simple. When I read that, I go, Subhanallah, this is just amazing. Look at our Sahaba Ikram, how simple they were. And how hard we have made our things. We need to get back to, that's why in the Hadith he mentions, Imam Malik Rahmatullah, he says, if, you want, if we want, like Mulana mentioned that, you know, is Islam applicable? It's 100% applicable and even now it's more applicable. Like for example, we talk about, you know, hygiene and all this. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say when he first thing? When you wake up in the morning, wash your hands. Then when the COVID came, everybody said, wash your hands, wash your hands. We wash our hands every namaz time for every wuzu. We wash our hands when we eat. We wash our hands after eating. We wash our hands before going to the bathroom, after going to the bathroom. We wake, when we wake up in the morning, we wash our hands. So many times washing our hands. Islam taught us that. 
cleanliness in the bathroom when we travel to these developed countries then we realize subhanallah there's no water available how are you going to possibly clean yourself after the call of nature especially after defecation after excretion that you just use a tissue paper and you think yourself clean it's not possible logically rationally it's not possible but they haven't come to this point yet after even 1400 years Islam taught us that 1400 years ago that use water after use, using cloth of earth nowadays after toilet tissue so all these things have been mentioned. So Islam is ever more applicable now in every aspect. You know, in terms of, I was saying to my students about fasting on Mondays and Thursdays, these doctors have come to this conclusion that two days of the week you should detoxify your body. To keep, zakat al jasad as soul. The zakat of the body, or purification of the body is by keeping fast. The Prophet has taught us that 1400 years ago. Now they talk about the magical toothbrush, the miswa. This was been used thousands of years from now on. So all these things is even more applicable in every aspect. Whether it's modesty, whether it's the ibadah, whether it's you know, helping all these things. You know, our Muslim brothers and sisters, they're the ones who help the most when people are in need. So Islam teaches us that you cannot be a true believer whilst you are eating and your neighbor is going hungry. You know, look at the Prophet Sallallahu compassionate and compassion in his teaching. What do he say? إِذَا تَبَخْتَ مَرَقَةً فَأَكْثِرْ مَاءَهَا وَتَعَاهَدْ جِيرَانَكَ Allahu Akbar. When you are cooking your food, soup, فَأَكْثِرْ If you don't have the means, even then add a bit more water and keep an eye on your neighbors. So the teaching is so wholesome, it's so amazing, so awesome. We don't follow it. So each and every one of us, we need to make sure that we study Islam properly. We need to study the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ to implement his life, to implement every sunnah. There's a book I, in the first two weeks of COVID, I completed. It's called The Day with the Prophet. So a day with the Prophet, I started from the time when the Prophet ﷺ woke up. What are the sunnah? All reference. Every single sunnah is referenced from the authentic hadith books. So I would recommend our brothers and sisters to get hold of that book and study it and try to practice on that. It starts from the time when you wake up till the time going to sleep. All the sunnahs, alhamdulillah, are mentioned there. And we need to revive. That's the way we can keep our iman strong. That's the way we can keep our iman strong. So who am I? I need to be 100% convinced that alhamdulillah, I'm a believer. And I need to continue to carrying out good deeds. I can't just be a part-time. إِذَا سَرَّتْكَ حَسَنَتُكَ وَسَاعَتْكَ سَيِّئَتُكَ فَأَنْتَ مُؤْمِنٍ Who is a true believer? The Prophet ﷺ asked that what is the sign that I'm a true believer? He gave these two def- definitions. إِذَا سَرَّتْكَ حَسَنَتُكَ When good deeds makes you happy and bad deeds makes you sad. <coughs> I miss my fajr. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ You feel grieved. I read my namaz. Alhamdulillah. You're a believer. If you don't have no worries, you're committing sin after sin. I'm afraid that's dangerous. You're going on the slippery road. So each and every one of us, we are Muslim. We have got that identity and we need to continue. That subhanallah, Islam means to surrender. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذْ قَالَ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ To Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, He said, قَالَ أَسْلَمْ to رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ He surrendered, submitted everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذِ بِتَلَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُمْ When Allah tested him with all these different trials and tribulations, what happened was, subhanallah, immediately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he passed every single test. Allah then gave him the reward. إِنِّي جَعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا So Allah's testing us, this test is short time compared to the reward which we're going to get, inshallah ta'ala, in the hereafter. Let us identify ourselves alhamdulillah wa qala alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadi laula nahdana we need to make sure that we and we praise allah subhanahu three things before i finish off that we need to do to preserve our iman number one is we need to express our gratitude la in shakartum la azidannakum so alhamdulillah we are believers so when we are great, grateful allah says i will give you more of the words allah will keep us istiqamat Allah will give us that steadfastness of Iman. Number one. Number two is we need to do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dua which is mentioned, Hakimullah Mashaykh Ashwali Ta'ala Rahmatul mentions the dua that in Surah Allah Ibrahim, the first ruku, Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da is hadayin. Allah, don't deviate us after you have given us guidance. So read this dua after every salah. And third is stay in the company of the pious people, of the ulama, of the sulaha, 
of the Sufiya, of the people who are, who have got the true knowledge of Deen. That's why, under the Quranic verse, Ya Yuhal Ladina Amanu Taqullahu Wa Kunu Ma'as Sadiqin, that those people who believe, Ittaqullah, fear Allah and stay with the people who are truthful. So, Allah Ma'alu Si Rahmatullah Ali, under this he writes, that how long should we be staying? Khalituhum Hatta Taqunu Mithlam. Stay in the company until you become like them. And that's why in a hadith we mentioned when we have a gathering like this, before everybody stands up, what happens is, humul qawmu la yashqa jalisuhum. These people, not even a person who came late and sat with them, he will not go wretched. Allah will shower his mercy on that person as well. So stay in the company of pious people. If you can do these three things, we can keep our identity and we need to take this iman with us. That was the fear. Like we have to have that fear. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu salam. They had the family members at the time when they were leaving this world. إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ And they were so worried. We worried about our assets, about our money, about our buildings and things like that. They were worried about the Iman. What is going to happen about Iman? So they told them. When they said to them that, you know, they made them say to them, What are you going to worship after me? So they had to say, نَعْبُدُ إِلَهَكَ وَإِلَهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِمُ إِسْمَعِلُ إِسْحَقْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ We're going to remain. As believers, we're going to worship the same God as you worshipped, our father and grandfather worshipped. <coughs> Allahu Akbar. That's why they said, فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Oh my sons and daughters, don't die but as a believer. That was the concern they had till the last moments. Have you got that concern for our children? We need to have that concern throughout our life and even when we're leaving this world, that concern should be there that our children, they remain steadfast. So they can die with Iman, we can die with Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to act upon what has been said.